Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So let's start this video off by answering a simple question. What is a reef tank? Well, in simple terms, it's an attempt to recreate a slice of the ocean in our homes. These captive ecosystems contain fish, corals, and invertebrates from around the world. Each tank is unique, but all strive to achieve a level of harmony that can illuminate the beauty we see in nature. But reef tanks also contain certain unwanted pests and organisms that can derail a reef keeper's plan to achieve success. Problematic algae is one of these roadblocks. You have two basic options when fighting algae. Fight it via natural means or use chemicals. Is the use of chemicals the best option when trying to mimic a natural reef? Let's dig into this a bit. Cyanobacteria is one of the most common forms of problematic algae. It can rear its ugly head when excess nutrients are present. It is often referred to as a form of algae, but it is actually a bacteria. There are a number of products on the market that are designed to nuke cyano within a matter of days. I have used ChemiClean and it did work, although it eventually led to an outbreak of dinos. You do have to be very diligent and follow the instructions. If you don't, then you risk a tank crash. Another issue when using chemicals to treat cyano is how it impacts the population of healthy bacteria in a tank. ChemiClean apparently contains a chemical that can kill many species of bacteria. The question is, does it impact bacteria that are part of the nitrogen cycle? Personally, I don't want to take the chance of setting my good guy bacteria population by using chemicals unless I have a major, major plague of cyano. I also don't want to create an imbalance in my tank that can lead to another problem. Perhaps this is why dinos popped up after I used ChemiClean. I advocate using natural means to rid a tank of cyano. This includes increasing flow, siphoning out as much cyano as you can, performing regular water changes, using a good skimmer, not overfeeding the tank, and employing a good cleanup crew. Another key is to remove as much detritus as you can. Using a power head every now and then to blow detritus off the rocks is a great way to dislodge it and move it into the water column where it can be removed via mechanical filtration. If you have sand, it can be helpful to siphon it to remove the detritus. It is best to clean just the top layer of sand since the bottom part of a sand bed can contain toxic substances such as hydrogen sulfide. If that leaches out, it could cause harm to the tank's inhabitants. You can also deploy certain critters like sea cucumbers, nasaria snails, crabs, and gobies to keep detritus in check. Detritus is much easier to remove in bare bottom tanks. In my peninsula tank, which is bare bottom, a decent amount accumulates in one spot near the end viewing panel of the tank. Every week I use a hose to siphon it up, so it's pretty simple. Any detritus that collects in a sump should also be removed. Detritus is dead organic matter, and the accumulation of these elements can cause nitrates and phosphates to rise, leading to cyano. High nutrients can also cause bryopsis. This type of algae is notoriously tough to eradicate and can spread quickly if neglected. Again, chemical treatment is one way to rid a tank of bryopsis. Fluconazole has been used by a number of hobbyists to remove bryopsis. Many report success, but others have had issues with SPS bleaching out. Again, how does it impact the biology of the tank? Reluctantly, I did experiment with fluconazole and had some initial success. My bryopsis did return after a few months, but I was able to eradicate it via natural means. I removed as much as possible and kept nutrients in check. I was careful to not to squeeze the bryopsis while removing it since spores can be potentially released and cause it to spread. Covering up the bryopsis with a piece of rubble rock or something else was also effective for me. Overall, chemicals are a band-aid for a more systemic problem. Yes, they can be effective when used properly, but problematic algae can return if the issue fueling the algae is not resolved. And what is the collateral damage to the tank's ecosystem? Do we really understand all of the negative side effects? Using good old elbow grease to keep nutrients in check and removing algae manually are less invasive and safer paths. Remember, we are trying to achieve a level of harmony with our reef tanks to replicate what exists in nature. 
How much do chemicals impact this harmony and trigger other issues? One last thing to consider is bacteria dosing. There are products out in the market that allow you to add bacteria to a tank that can potentially help clear up green, red, and brown algae. These types of products help to dissolve organic waste in the aquarium. This is another natural method, and I am just starting to experiment on this front, so more on this to come later. Well, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I also want to remind you about my premium SPS frag store on reefbum.com. I will leave a link in the video description below. I'll also leave links from my equipment store. I do sell GHL, Royal Exclusive, Pax Bellum, and Reef Bright equipment, plus ice cap and max spec gyros, as well as Reef Octopus calcium and calc reactors. Many of these products I do use personally on my tanks. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.